1 2 3 4 Hi everyone, welcome back to Technical and Pictorial Drawing at helveticamediama.com.au In this episode of the video I'm going to make a one point perspective using dimensions. Uh, I'm working from a plan that I've drawn that's on the page where this video is. Uh, and I've got the plan with actual measurements, plan and elevation shown. But um, I've scaled all of the dimensions so that they're at 1 to 50 scale. So I've changed all those dimensions in preparation for the video so I know exactly how big to make my perspective. And I'm going to show you how you can measure with real dimensions uh, on the verticals and horizontals of one point perspective. So I know that I need to make a rectangle 92 millimeters wide by a height well my house is 2700 high floor to ceiling so it's 54 so let's work on making a rectangle 92 by 54 so I've drawn a line here um, using a felt tip so that you can see it 92 I'll use my set square it's gonna be a pretty small drawing but it will show you how we do it 92 like that it's going to be 54 high so let's do that 54 54 it doesn't look square let's try it again 54 and 54 I think I went 57 and there's the rectangle the perspective is going to sit in. The next most important thing is whereabouts is the vanishing point. So the vanishing point is said to be 1600. The horizon line is 1600 off the floor. So 32 up. I might have to measure that in two places to get it right. 32 up. When you're doing a perspective in exams, just remember that you can always measure with true measurements. Uh, it's 1,000 in, so that's 20 millimeters in from the side, and that's my vanishing point. Okay, now having calculated the vanishing point, I can bring in the receding lines. So I know that I'm going to get this scaled exactly right. should have probably made them a little bit lighter. Anyway, let's carry on. Okay, now the only thing we do have to guesstimate with this procedure of one point is we have to guess how far I should make that back wall. So I'm going to make it maybe about there. I think might be a good amount in perspective. So you can guesstimate that. I've got that. Now I need to trace this line around, taking care that I keep my set square aligned with the bottom of the page. And there I have the basis for my room. Okay, now it's time to start thinking about measurements in the elevation. Now what we do is we know exactly where these windows are on the back wall viewed from here. But I can't measure those dimensions there because they're uh, not in the same uh, scale. But we do know at the front what's going on. So I'm going to say there's a little wall here. I'm going to say that that's at 60 in. and it's too wide. So basically what I'm doing is I'm drawing that elevation in the front at the front of the drawing. I'm going to be very light with these lines so that I can make sure they don't obscure everything. I'm coming in 14 here. I'm 
So I've got to figure out. So basically what I'm doing is I'm drawing this elevation on the front of the house, on, on the front of this perspective, 20 for a thousand wide. Then I have six between the windows. And then I have another 20, which takes me to that window, that's right. Now that's about all I need in terms of those details there, that's not straight. Okay, now what I do now to calculate where these are at the back wall, let's just take them right through to the vanishing point. You don't need to draw your lines all the way to the vanishing point. They just need to go to the back wall. And I only need this side of this one, I think. Okay, so that should give me... There's the wall. There's the window. There's the gap between the window. And here's the window on this side. Should have made that squarer. How does that look? One window, two windows. Okay, so I've got those two windows in. I've drawn that, traced, traced that from the front and projected it to the back. Okay, it's time to start working on this kitchen bench at the back. Now we can see that the kitchen bench is a thousand high, which is 20. But we know that the kitchen bench is at the back. So the kitchen bench is in here somewhere. So how do I know a thousand that way I can't work that out in this scale because I don't know the scale of the back wall but I do know the dimensions at the front and I know that it's 20 so if I take this in here 20 where it intersects there which happens to be at just over 25 I know that is the height of the bench there. So I have the bench. We know that the bench comes across to the right side of this first window. If you look there you can see the bench comes across to the right hand side of the first window. So we can see that that comes out here. And there I have, so there's you can see the makings of the kitchen bench there. Now, my next problem is how far does the bench extend out in the floor space? Well we can see here that the bench is 600 wide and the floor space is 2400. So it's a quarter of that. So how do we make a quarter of a space in perspective? We use diagonal lines. Look through your ruler and line up a line according to the numbers on the ruler. There's half of the space. Back to the vanishing point gives me the true half. And then I only need to divide that one in half, which gives me a quarter there. So if I come back across here,
there's the kitchen bench. That's the depth of the kitchen bench. I uh, wonder if you can see that. So the kitchen bench comes a quarter of the room forwards. So even though I guesstimated that initial depth, I've proved where the bench should be. Next, it's time for the bed. Now we know that the bed is a total of 800 high. There's a little 100 in, in here that I have to add there later. 800 is going to be 16 at a scale of 1 to 50. So mark that out uh, there. And there's the bed again. Checking that I'm getting these lines parallel by looking at other parts of the set square. Here comes the bed on this side. Now we know that the bed does not come all the way. It comes a little bit back from the end. It doesn't touch that wall here. So there we have that. If you're freestyling it with the set square, don't forget to compare the lines with other edges of the set square. Okay, there's the bed in. What's well, pretty much, let's give the bed a little pillow, as shown in the plan there. I reckon it's time to heavy in everything. Oh, I forgot the one millimeter or two millimeters up. I think I'm just going to cheat. Just do it by eye for the kick rail. Then we had um, opening doors in the cupboard. Which is there. We also had a thick, 200 thick bench top. Okay, let's heavy this in so that you can see it now. I'm going to start with that kitchen bench, noting that I'm keeping my set square nice and parallel. Forgot that line. Don't forget lines because if you're in an exam, you will lose marks. rail sits in a little bit further. Let's finish off the kitchen bench. Back to the wall and one back here. Let's do the bed. Pillow. Pillow. sheet as shown in the bed. And now the vertical lines. Back to the vanishing point. Don't forget that I calculated where that vanishing point is by dimensions on 
the plan and elevation. Okay, next is a small wall actually only extends 600 as well, which is at that quarter point. Quarter of the room, which only comes to there. It's only a little nib wall. Okay, time for the back wall now. Space between the windows and the corner of the room. Then we have the bottom of the floor line. And then let's take these walls back here. And forward of the bed. Lastly, let's complete the rectangle. Now I think that's most of the lines done, so if I just get a rubber we can rub out all these construction lines now, as long as it doesn't take the ink with it. I think I've forgotten one line there. <sighs> oh no, it's smudging the drawing. Sorry about that. Don't rub out the construction lines. Well apart from the smudges on the drawings, that's it. So what I've done is I've drawn that elevation on the front. I've then projected it back at, until I calculate that projection on the back wall. And in fact what I did at the start was I calculated the height of the horizon line and the distance in for the vanishing point. So that should be all to scale and should be right apart from all the smudges. So thanks for watching and we'll catch up again soon.